Hello YouTubers, welcome back to Vintage Tech Doctor. Uh, I've got here a bit of an emergency repair. This is um, a small uh, spirit notepad mixer from my studio, um, which I use as a headphone mixer. And unfortunately it started making funny noises. Um, loud buzzing, basically. Um, so I've got it here on the kitchen table and I'm going to take a look at uh, what's causing it. I've got a good idea that uh, we'll find out. So, first thing, I've removed all of the screws, there's screws there, screws along the top, you've also got to remove the screws from all of the XLR sockets as well and these uh, nuts which they don't unscrew, they turn a quarter turn anti-clockwise and then pull out which um, I've never seen those before and then once you've removed all of the knobs and everything off the top I'm going to do this one handed uh, here we go it does in fact come apart and straight away we'll zoom into here which is where the power supply is um, it uses an AC adapter not an AC-DC adapter it's an AC-AC and uh, it outputs plus and minus 17 volts AC so the power comes in here plus 17 minus 17 and earth but look we have the dreaded Bulgy capacitor. Let's see if I can get a focus on that. Come on camera, you can do it. Or maybe not. Technology's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, can you see it's bulging? Trust me, that capacitor is really bulging, uh, despite the fact that you can't see it on camera. So, that's instantly um, coming to mind as the culprit for why this thing is buzzing so that's got to be changed and while I'm in there I may as well as change all of the power supply caps while I'm at it so uh, let's get this thing down the workshop right down the workshop now and yeah, this board literally just pops out like that so we'll um, get rid of that bottom part and now we've got to figure out what capacitors we need and uh, yeah you can see on camera now that this one here is very bulgy and um, the most likely culprit for the buzzing on the audio so uh, right I'm gonna have a rummage through my capacitors and see if I can find the right ones back shortly okay so the capacitors we need are 470 microfarads at 30 volts the closest I've got are these, which are 470 at 50 volts. So I'd rather put a 50 volt in than a 25, which are the only other ones I've got. So 50 volt means that there's a little bit more tolerance for the, you know, for, for over voltage. So you know, hopefully they'll last a nice long time. Uh, so I need to get the old ones out and the new ones in. So I've got my desoldering braid soldering iron um, and I'm gonna get going. I can't do this on camera because I uh, haven't got enough hands. Okay we have the faulty capacitor and these these leads are not long enough to go into this uh, little jobby there so I shall hold them on to those pads and push the button Yeah, that's hilarious. 84 microfarads, supposed to be uh, 470, and an ESR, which is uh, 17 ohms. That is terrible. Absolutely terrible. So, yeah, these are, well, at least this one especially, is completely toast. So, right, let's swap them out for a new pair. Okay, I'm on to the next pair of capacitors now, which are uh, 47 microfarads at 100 volt. I hope I've got a pair of those, because this one, as you can see, has got no legs. <laughs> well, it has. The, the capacitors just came off its legs, and the legs are still in the board. Um, yeah, so these are obviously... Uh, well past their prime as well, so I've got to see if I can find a pair of those and currently I don't have uh, an enormous stash of spare capacitors, just um, a big bundle I bought off eBay um, some 
wonderful sort of Chinesey type uh, caps. I just hope they're good. <laughs> and I hope I've got a 47 at 100 volts. So, um, yeah, back in a moment. Okay, the new ones are in, and I've replaced these ones here, these 47 microfarad ones, which are a little bigger than the original ones. And when you put the face plate back on, you see more or less has about one millimeters clearance which uh, yeah that's a bit close but hey that's all I've got so they I had to use reclaimed capacitors in the end for the uh, 47 mic ones because uh, this enormous bundle I bought off eBay didn't have any uh, even remotely close to that in it everything's about 16 volts or 25 volts and I needed a hundred volts okay headphones plugged in Silly proprietary flimsy power supply <laughs> plugged in. I really don't like these connectors. These are horrendous. I mean, look at that. Three tiny pins in a little plastic thing. It's just so flimsy and horrible. You know, I mean, this this is what they were like new. You know, this it's not good. Uh, you know, from a company like Soundcraft, um, that's a very disappointing design. Oh, silence is golden. <laughs> Yep, there is no hiss. So let's turn, let's just make sure by turning up things that, oh, are actually already turned up. And let's turn that up as well. That's, yep, there we go. Lovely. A good repair that worked. I'm happy. Uh, right, other, other videos coming up soon. I have this, I have to show this off. This is a Sony Trinitron from 1986. Um, Got a glass front on it. Uh, beautiful tube, really good condition. Um, I've got the back off it at the moment uh, and covered over because I do have a bit of a leaky workshop despite just having a new roof put on. That's a whole other story I'm not going to. Um, this TV uh, has sound issues. Uh, this, the issue is there's no sound at all. Um, so that's, that's, um, that's another project for me to get into at some point and uh, I'm sure I'll make a video about it when I get around to it. Okay, thanks for watching.